Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the second module of our deep learning course where in this module we are discussing about mathematics for deep learning. In today's video, let's understand about vectors and how vectors are used exactly in deep learning. So this will be the agenda for today's video and before getting started, please consider subscribing to my channel if my content is helpful to you and check out my channel membership where you will get early access for my videos and other perks. So let's get started with today's video. So first let's understand what is meant by a vector and later we can discuss how this is used in deep learning. So vectors are mathematical entities that have both magnitude and direction. So this we know right. So this is what we think about when we talk about vectors because this is what we would have learned in our school as well. So a vector has both magnitude and direction. So there is another basic data type called as scalar which has only a magnitude. So you can think about these scalars as single numbers or constant values. So whereas a vector would have both magnitude and direction. So they are often represented as arrows in space just like the one that we have here so we would represent this with an arrow where the length of the arrow represents the magnitude and the direction of the arrow indicates the direction of the vector so here let's say that we have this arrow and we have a value a right so this represents the magnitude so let's say that this magnitude can be five units or six units and then we have this direction point pointing towards it so if you just take the angle let's say this is a 45 degree so that would be the direction so this is how you can represent vectors and this is the coordinate of a vector so a1 comma a2 and you kind of represent the vector in this coordinate spaces of x and y so uh, that's what is basically given here so this is all about vector so you have this magnitude and direction and again you can have like uh, have this in a higher dimensional space as well so this vector is currently in a two dimensional space of x and y and but you can also have this in a three dimensional space so you have x y and z and that would be represented by like three uh, coordinate values a1 a2 and let's say a3 or you will also kind of represent this coordinate axis as i uh, you know j and, and so on so this is about vectors and few examples of these vectors are let's say 2 comma 1 is let's say a coordinate of a vector from this you can find the magnitude of this vector and also the direction of the vector and you also this is reference to the point origin so we have this coordinates so and then we have like in three dimension you can think about it think about it as 1 comma 4 comma minus 1 or basically any numbers so we have the uh, you know coordinate in x y and z coordinate and then you all have this example in four coordinates of two three minus one and five so this is how you can represent this vector is as nothing but order of numbers and when we think about a machine learning and, and deep learning space these vectors are widely used in representing the data so let's say let's consider this third example and we have like four values right so a data point can be represented as a vector where each of this value can represent a, uh, represent a feature so let's say that you are working on a diabetes prediction model and you have four features like let's say a uh, age of the person the gender of the person there uh, you know some value that represents diabetes and so on so we have one data point and all these features can be represented as kind of a list uh, or a vector so this is like one application of how this data can be represented here so this is about vector now let's understand why we need to understand kind of vectors and how they are used in deep learning so that it makes like uh, it, it gives gives us like more context to it so these are the applications of vectors uh, in deep learning so when we think about deep learning right so vectors are mainly used to represent manipulate and process data throughout the neural network so first let's understand about the input data representation so each input data point as we have discussed so that data point can be an image or a text snippet or even a sound clip or an audio so all these input data points uh, are typically converted into a vector of features so you have this example right so let's say that this is one vector and we have individual features so you would represent uh, input data points so let's say this is a single data point so you would represent this as a vector of features so that's what it means so we can represent or basically convert this data point into a vector of features you can think about this image example right so image is nothing but a representation as a vector of pixel intensity values so if you have a 224 uh, comma 224 image that means you have 224 into 224 pixel intensity values and you can represent that as a single vector and this is how it kind of goes through the neural network so you would do this flattening uh, in the neural network where it would kind of convert that into a vector and so on so that's one example of 
how input data can be represented as vectors and then you have this weights and biases so all these weights and biases in a neural network can also be represented as vectors not only as vectors they can also be represented as uh, kind of biases as well and you kind of do some uh, vector operations on it and then we have this linear transformation where we mainly use vector operations like dot product so in the next video i'll uh, discuss in detail about the different vector operations that we have so we have vector additions vector subtract subtraction uh, you have dot product cross product and so on so there we will discuss about it but just uh, kind of keep this in mind so we have linear transformation so th this linear transformation is nothing but it's like the basic cooperation that happens in a neural network layer or even in an individual neuron which is a linear transformation where we would multiply this weight and bias right so we have discussed about this in the previous videos where we have discussed about perceptron so in each neuron you would do this linear transformation where you multiply the input feature value with a weight value and you would add a bias right so this is nothing but this is like a linear transformation is a dot product between the input vector the weight matrix and the bias vector so all these are kind of uh, mainly dependent on the vector operations which we are going to discuss so that's like another application when it comes to deep learning and then we have this gradient calculation so we have discussed about back propagation in the first module of a deep learning course so this back propagation algorithm again this is used to use in the training of neural networks and this involves the computation of gradients so gradients is nothing but how your loss function is going to change when you change a parameter value so we always want to minimize our loss function so we use this gradient to change the weight values so these gradients right so these are basically vectors that indicates the direction in which each parameter should be adjusted whether it should be increased or decreased or like what's the direction in which the parameters values should be changed so all these are represented in vectors as well the gradients so that's where it's used in the case of gradient calculation and the other two uh, main applications are embedding so we have this vector embeddings and this is even i mean this is mainly used in natural language processing and, and when we think about gen ai applications like rag retrieval augmented generation we kind of widely use this vector embeddings where you would convert the text into this vector embedding so in nlp right natural language processing the words or phrases are basically mapped to vectors of real numbers so it's basically representing those uh, words as uh, vector embeddings and this basically is used to do some similarity search uh, to find like the closest match so let's say that you have a document and uh, you have some some or let's say you have a lot of text in the document so you would convert all these words or this you know phrases into vector embedding store it in a vector db or somewhere and then you have a query where let's say the user asks a question and you need to find the answer for that question so you would uh, convert that query as well into a vector embeddings do a similarity search uh, on that documents vector embedding and you would find the answer so that's where like word embeddings are like really uh, i mean like widely used in the case of nlp and then you have vector spaces for semantic similarity so semantic similarity is like again finding those uh you know similar vectors to kind of do this document question answering kind of a use case so you have this vector spaces where you would convert this again uh, you know words and other things into uh, vector embeddings and you do a semantic similarity so for that like vector spaces are like really helpful so these are some of the main applications of vectors in deep learning so i hope that now you clearly understand why we need to understand or, or learn about vectors and how these are used in deep learning in the upcoming videos let's understand about the vector operations and uh, that will be the next video but all these other things right so the linear transformation gradient calculation word embedding so all these will be covered in the respective topics for example word embeddings and vector spaces will be covered in the part of nlp so you can wait for that and gradient calculation we can discuss about it when we discuss in detail about how you train a neural network so i hope everyone is clear until this point and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching